However, there was another side to him that's more personal, more intimate, more human that we've heard referred to several times today. And that was his family, his neighbors and his friends who are gathered here today. It was a side that many people did not see. For Richard Nixon was a private person in some ways. And then some people thought there was a shyness about him. Others sometimes found him hard to get to know. There were hundreds of little things he did for ordinary people that no one would have ever known about. He always had a compassion for people who were hurting. No one could ever understand Richard Nixon unless they understood the family from which he came, the Quaker church that he attended, Whittier College where he studied, and the land and the people in this area where you're sitting today. His roots were deep in this part of California. But there's still another side to him that was his strong and growing faith in God. He never wore his religious faith on his sleeves, but was rather reticent to speak about it in public. He could have had more reasons than most for not attending church while he occupied the White House when there were so many demonstrations and threats going on. But he wanted to set an example, and he decided to have services most Sundays in the White House. A small congregation, a clergyman from various denominations. And I remember before one of the first services that President Nixon had at the White House, Ruth and I and two of our friends were in the private quarters with him. I'll never forget the president sitting down on the spur of the moment at an old battered Steinway that they had there playing the old hymn. He will hold me fast, for my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. John Donne said that there's a democracy about death. It comes equally to us all and makes us all equal when it comes. And I think today every one of us ought to be thinking about our own time to die because we too are going to die and we're going to have to face Almighty God with the life that we lived here. There comes a time when we have to realize that life is short and in the end the only thing that really counts is not how others see us here but how God sees us and what the record books of heaven have to say. For the Bible who, for the believer who has been to the cross, death is no frightful leap into the dark, but is an entrance into a glorious new life. I believe that Richard Nixon right now is with Pat again. Because I believe that in heaven we will know each other. The Bible says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. There's a gaining about death. For the believer, the brutal fact of death has been conquered by the resurrection and of Jesus Christ. For the person who has turned from sin and has received Christ as Lord and Savior, death is not the end. For the believer, there's hope beyond the grave. There's a future life. Yesterday, as his body was escorted to the plane for its final journey here, the band played and the familiar strains of a hymn he especially loved, maybe the best, the hymn that he loved the most, were played, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, for grace will take me home. That hymn was written 200 years ago by an Englishman named John Newton. He was a cruel man, a captain of a slave ship. But one night in a fierce storm, he turned to God and committed his life to Christ. Newton not only became a preacher of the gospel, but he influenced Will William Wilberforce and others in Parliament to bring an end to the slave trade. John Newton came to know the miracle of God's amazing grace and it changed his life and it changed our lives as well. 
And so, we say farewell to Richard Nixon today with hope in our hearts, for our hope is in the eternal promises of Almighty God. Years ago, Winston Churchill planned his own funeral, and he did so with the hope of the resurrection and eternal life which he firmly believed in. And he instructed after the benediction that a bugler positioned high in the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral would play taps, the universal signal that says the day is over. But then came a very dramatic moment as Churchill had instructed. Another bugler was placed on the other side of the massive dome and he played the notes of Reveille, the universal signal that a new day has dawned and it is time to arise. That was Churchill's testimony that at the end of history, the last note will not be taps, it'll be Reveille. There is hope beyond the grave because Jesus Christ has opened the door to heaven for us by his death and resurrection. Richard Nixon had that hope and today, that can be our hope as well. And to the children and the grandchildren, I would say to you, you have that hope within your hearts. I, know, I had the privilege of knowing them when they were little girls. And I've seen them as they've come to know Christ and to know God in their lives. And we look forward to seeing Dick and Pat someday in the future again. Shall we pray? God of all comfort, in the silence of this hour we ask thee to sustain this family and these loved ones and to deliver them from loneliness, despair, and doubt. Fill their desolate hearts with thy peace and may this be a moment of rededication to thee, our Father, those of us who have been left behind have the solemn responsibilities of life. Help us to live according to thy will and for thy glory so that we will be prepared to meet thee. We offer our prayer in the name of him who is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.